This is the final video podcast in my series discussing the changes to the promulgated contract. February 1 is fast approaching when these changes will be part of the mandatory contract. Previously, I've covered all the changes in the one to four family contract, the third party financing addendum, the addendum for property subject to mandatory membership in a property owners association, and the amendment. Today, I will cover the other changes. In the addendum regarding residential leases, a provision was added for a disclosure from seller to buyer of any oral leases in existence on the property. Oral leases for periods less than one year are binding, so any tenant under an oral lease would have a right superior to a buyer under a subsequently entered into contract. Disclosure and how to handle the oral lease is now part of the addendum. The addendum regarding fixture lease was changed to flip it from buyer assuming all fixture leases except to buyer only assuming the leases checked. A provision was also added to provide for oral leases of any existing fixture lease. Oral leases for personal property are binding. And as discussed in a previous video podcast, it is critical that a seller disclose any fixture leases covering the property, otherwise he may be bound under the contract to convey the fixture even though he does not own it. The seller financing addendum was modified first to provide notice and warning that seller financing can be complicated and subject to laws regulating these loans, so the parties should consult an attorney and a financial professional before signing. Then some language was added to paragraph B of the addendum to clarify seller's right to terminate the contract if buyer fails to deliver the credit documentation required or if seller determines buyer's credit is unacceptable. A clause was also added to address the need of, or of waiver of evidence to seller of the casualty insurance. And finally, the addendum provides that if the seller requires buyer to escrow payments for taxes and insurance under the seller note, seller will give an accounting of the escrow, similar to what a conventional lender provides when escrows are required. The loan assumption addendum was modified similar to the seller financing addendum to clarify rights of seller to terminate the contract under the proof of credit paragraph. Another clause was added to require the seller to deliver to buyer copies of the note, deed of trust, and most recent loan statements for the loan being assumed. Then another paragraph was added to give authorization to seller's lender to provide the private information on that financing be assumed by the buyer to the buyer and to allow for sharing of private information on closing statements to brokers and sales agents on the transaction. Finally, notice is also given about the possible impact of assumption on the due on sale restrictions under the note and deed of trust being assumed. In addition to the previously discussed changes in the one to four family contract, the condo contract had some additional specific changes. The dates for delivery of the condo docs and right to terminate were modified and a reference to the applicable property code that regulates this delivery and termination was referenced. Also, a change was made to make clear that fees associated with the transfer do not include regular periodic dues. This is the same clarification that was added to the addendum for property subject to mandatory membership in a property owner association, which we discussed earlier. Finally, there were some unique changes made to the farm and ranch contract. The first was to add a notice that the promulgated farm and ranch contract is not for use in complex transactions. And then the legal description was modified to make allowance for a legal description which spans more than one county. Paragraph 3D was modified to clar clarify how you adjust the sales price based on acreage under the survey. And then paragraph 4D was addressed, um, added to address any surface leases or oral leases affecting the property. And a corresponding change was made to paragraph 6F. Lots of changes were made to your contract and addenda. Some were more substantive than others. Some were just for clarification. But I hope this series has provided you value in turn, if you find value in these video podcasts, I ask that you help Allegiance Title in, with support of your business. Allegiance Title is your trusted resource for results. Thank you.